Hey everybody, I got something that would like to say hello to you guys. Hi everybody. Hello, hello, hello. That was a very cool armature that's going to go in an even cooler sculpture. In this video, I'm going to be focusing just on the armature, nothing else. I'm taking my time and I'm showing you everything that I've done and try to explain the best of my ability why I've done it. This armature is probably the most structurally sound thing I've ever created. And I know it will support the clay how it's supposed to. And it will be completely poseable when this sculpture is finished. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody to please like this video and join in on the conversation. Let me know what you think in the comments below about all this. I mean, there's plenty to talk about. And let me know some of the design elements and stuff. What do you see this sculpture as once it's finished? It really, really helps me a lot. It helps this video a lot. It helps the channel. And if you support what I do, I mean, by all means, like it and give me a comment because it helps with the, you know, the ranking of the video and stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, these are some of the things I'm gonna be using in this project. I'm gonna start with this galvanized wire. I'm gonna use galvanized because it's real rigid, it's strong wire, and it'll offer the most posability for the slug. And some smaller galvanized wire because I'll be using these glass beads. I got these at Hobby Lobby, but you can get them at Walmart, I think. Um, I found that this galvanized wire is just small enough to pass through these. So I'll, I'll run some of that through this and then it attach each of them individually to the main structure wire. And I got this board right here. I was going to use this to make a horse, but I don't have my, my options for wood right now are very limited. I wanted to be able to have something that would give me a little bit of a length so I can make a decent length of a creature. I had this other board, but obviously it's too small. I'll save this for something else. We got right here some cosplay. Obviously, this is going to be the main feature of this video. This is not available until fall, so if you're following along with this project, you still can. You gotta use Super Sculpey or some other clay, um, unfortunately, until the, this clay becomes available to the public, which will be around this fall. I got a palette knife. I use this to make cuts. I cut my clay and stuff with it a lot. And this is my main go-to tool. It's a little dentist tool that I got at flea, at, you know, flea markets. It's got a spade on one end that I, I slightly bent. And on the other end, it's got this little finger thingy. I don't know what that's called, but I use it to cut details and lines and stuff. A couple acrylic brushes because acrylic brushes work really well. They, the little bristles don't come out. They're my favorite type of brushes to use for projects. And I'll be using some acrylic paint. I've already tested this type of clay with some acrylic paints, this color in fact, and I found that it bends perfectly. It doesn't crack or anything. Something to cut my wire. And it's pretty thick, pretty tough wire, so I need something to cut that with. And this is to make my bends to manipulate the wire. Uh, I'll be rolling my clay out with a pasta machine, which is over to the right, right here. And um, there's really nothing else, I don't think. This should be pretty much everything. If I come across something else, I'll, I'll just show you during the video. Having said that, let's get started. This board definitely seems like it'll do the trick. It's, it's big enough. I'd like to make it maybe a little bigger than this, to be honest. Uh, and it's probably going to look different than this. Always wear safety glasses when using wire. If you value your eyes, anyways, because all it takes is one good stab and you're, you're done. So be safe, people. See, that could have just stabbed me. And what we need to do is we need to figure out how long these are going to be. Just say that this is the body and it stops right around here and then it bends up. So what's it going to do? How much of this? Let's just go with some sections about this, this long. I can cut them down. If you're following along, trying to do it yourself, just what, what I'm doing is I'm kind of guesstimating how long the eyes are going to be. I need the wire to go into the body and for each eye. That's three. And nine. 
I'm gonna get them all like the same length on one end. They're pretty much close enough. So now I'm gonna take my smaller wire here and I gotta bind these together. Trying to wrap it nice and tight. That looks good. I'm gonna use some needle nose here. I prefer to use pliers, but I can't find them to hold it, be able to hold it a little tighter. I'm just gonna wrap this nice and tight. I don't want these wires to move independently. I want them to be like a unit from this point. So this is just the best way I can see how to do that. And that seems like a good enough wrap so I'll just cut this excess off. I'm going to just bend them a little bit to try to get some kind of sensibility going on here. I want them flat. I'm gonna bend two of these this way. And then two more on this side, this way. I should have left that wire on there instead of cutting it off. I did that so I could put a couple screws right here in the, the rear of it, kind of anchor it down. And I suppose I can just stick a screw right here. I want it to be attached to the wood. You have to use screws to do that. So now I just have to figure out where this is going to be. Should be in the middle. This should be like the middle of the body, which I'm thinking I can clip these off. Try not to let this distract us. So the tail can run a little further than this part. I'm thinking right around here looks good. So I'm going to try to get this bound to the wood with this screw. That went nice. Do one on this side. And of course, I'm making this up as I go. I don't really know what I'm doing. What I do know is I want it to be attached to this wood and not come off the wood. It's actually quite important to me because I'm going to be doing some uh, stop motion with it to create an animated image or a GIF, which is a pretty cool idea, I think. Which I might show y'all guys one day how I do my stop motion which is something I just figured out on my own. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not conventional. All right, that feels really good. We're stuck on the wood now. Another one up here, if I can. Maybe I can actually put the screw in through, like just screw it through the wires instead of trying to push it through. It's threaded, so I don't see why it wouldn't. And it did. I'm gonna reach around and grab this with this wire right here so I can go under it like this. And then wrap it one more time. Ooh, goodness, goodness. Drive this screw home a little bit more. So I have three screws on here effectively holding this to the wood. Already I'm liking this. Now I'm gonna clip off these extra pieces back here. They have no purpose really. And if it has no purpose, you might as well just get rid of it. Yeah, I like this. It's, it doesn't need to have like a ton of strength because it's gonna be a tiny item. You know, I could pick it up by its neck or whatever. This is gonna be fine. Um, it is pretty darn strong. So there's a side view of it. So the next part, I think I'm going to use epoxy sculpt for the bulk of the body, like 
to start it anyways. Uh, two reasons. One, it'll reinforce holding all this stuff together. And two, it won't be so much for me to have to bake because the body is obviously going to be a very thick item, which I'll be pre-baking the body. And I'll leave all this alone and bare. And I'll do all this and bake it a second time. But I want to get a little bit of epoxy sculpt right here you know, surrounding this and getting it kind of situated. Okay, this is a two-part component. When they mix together, it become rock hard. But it takes, well, it says 24 hours for it to be completely cured. But you want equal amounts or close to it. This seems like an equal amount. And you just mix it together like so. You should probably wear gloves doing this. I'm mixing it by pushing it flat and then folding it, then pushing it flat again, folding it again. And you know it's starting to work when it gets really tacky. This stuff will get really tacky and you can start feeling a little bit of warmth to it. That's where the components are interacting with each other and hardening. Now, being that I got this so so nice meaning that this doesn't move see how this there's no movement right there got two screws back here one screw up here quite brilliant how i got that i guess in, in my opinion um you probably wouldn't need any of this and you could just build it solid solid super sculpey or a solid uh cosplay but you probably would want to make the body a little smaller than what it's supposed to be and then pre-bake that that way it's not so much you have to bake because the thicker you make this the longer you have to bake and the problem that it with that is these items here won't be that thick so by break, baking this properly you'll over bake the smaller parts and this is kind of what i'm hoping to um avoid by starting with this little body here this building out with this so to speak but I'm just setting this on here and I'm going to push it down, down into all that wire. Keep working it in there. Okay, so here we have the body of this. It has a little bit of a height to it. It's relatively flat and there appears to be a, a bit of a neck so to speak and I'd like to call this area a knuckle kind of reminds me of a crab you know the side of a crab where the legs come out you call that a knuckle and then of course all the appendage is coming out of it um, this is going to be a little bit scaled larger than this so what I gotta consider is the body will probably be somewhere around that high so after the neck the, the end of the neck would probably be a right around here and then I can make the knuckle thing I wanted to make it a little bit bigger than what this is I reason being is because these these are a set size I can't change the size of these so I'm, I'm having to scale this to this size they make different size glass beads and I thought I had some littler ones but I don't know where they are maybe I used them or something but go big or go home, right? Okay, so what I would like to do is right about here, I want to attach this wire to bind all this. And then right above it, I'll separate them all and put make it kind of bulbous. These all can't just come out all together like that. It would, That doesn't make sense, you know? So I want to kind of spread it out. So to do that, I'm just going to right under where I would think the knuckle is put this wire on here I'm trying to wrap it very tightly the reason I'm putting this right here is so when I bend all this when I reshape this area it'll hold all this together and keep this grouped together so now what I'd like to do is begin bending these away from each other we're just spacing them out 
There's probably going to be a few in the middle area though, which kind of makes sense. So I'll just try to space them out. That's pretty good. See how that looks? So now that I got these bent out, these ones in the middle will, st will stay relatively straight. But the ones on the outside, I would like to try to bend them back in, but maintain how far out they are. I'm holding this down as low as I can with my thumb, my two fingers here, and just bend it back with this tool. Makes it easier to do. I'm trying to bend them all at the same um, the same height also and I'll try to do a little bit of a bend on the middle ones kind of just pull them apart from each other like this I don't really want them touching because that's going to be harder to manipulate you know doing the sculpting part so this looks good I actually like that check out what I got going on there okay so for this next part I'm wanting to I want to lock all this together because I don't know if you're aware of this or not uh, when you bend multiple wires together they stretch and pull at different amounts. The inner ones won't pull very much, but the outer ones will pull a lot. It's just how things work. And I don't want, I don't think it's going to be a posable feature right here, depending on how thick I make the neck area. But in case it is, in case it is bendable, I don't want these to be rocking back and forth. So is this part necessary? That's debatable. I just don't want. I want it to be very structurally sound. All right, it's super tacky. That's one way to know it's pretty much mixed. Now I'm going to begin working it in here. You don't always have to use epoxy sculpt right away. You can let it set for a little while and let it kind of set up. One more here. I don't think you can put too much effort in an armature. The more thought you put into it, the better off you're going to be. Because you don't want something sagging or it to be structurally unstable. Uh, you definitely want the whole, want it to be able to hold the clay during the baking process. I'm going to the whole thing. Now this may look a little tacky, or funny looking. But that's okay because th it's going to be larger. There's going to be more clay here. So far, my thoughts on this, I think this is pretty cool. In my mind, it's what I need to do to get the armature underway. And really, that's all that matters. I'm not worried about the middle three so much because that's done been packed way down in there. But I just went around all of these outer ones and I got it to where it's kind of coming up a little bit on them. Being careful not to push the outer parts of this clay in too much because I don't want to surface this again, the wire. I don't want to surface it. I want it to be submerged in this clay do some last minute checking here because this is still it's moving that clay is actually moving around but after a while it won't do that no more so this all looks pretty good I could do some last minute bending even after the fact but I won't be able to change the base position of these wires so this looks good okay now I'm going to show you how I attach the eyes to the slug it was almost impossible to do this actually onto the slug so I'm going to pretend that this is this is that galvanized wire I'll just I'll attach it to this which would be the same difference but this will offer a great vantage point for you guys so to do this 
and I got this down to a science now. I start with a wire about this big and offset, not in the center, but like over a little bit. I bend it over into a 90 degree angle like this. Well, that's not quite 90, but you get the idea. Let's bend that back. Okay, and then I slide the bead down like this. And then with this, I do this right here. This is a cool little trick I just figured out. I bend it away from the bead like that and then roll it this way. See how it did? So on this side, I'll do the same thing. And it takes some little practice to figure it, figure it out, but you roll it away, away from where it's supposed to end up, basically, and then back around this way. What I'm looking for is them to be next to each other like this, nice and uniform. If you notice, one's a little bit longer than the other, that's okay, we'll just snip that thing off. Then I take some of, my, some of my foil tape, cut it into two pieces. Okay, so this would be the, the snail monster, the end of one of the leads coming off of it. Okay, so all you do is you take all these three and put them together, making sure that shaft, or this lead right here is all the way up onto the marble. And then tape them all three together, wrapping tighter and tighter as as I go there I got one piece of tape on right here up towards the the marble and then for the second one you can offset this to where if you go like this it'll it'll tape on like evenly and neat but if you tilt tilt at an angle it'll spiral away which that's what I like to do and then just wrap it and it'll spiral a little bit right on to that other wire that is an awesome way to attach you know eyes using two two wires um if you look i'll bend this that way i can get a a good you know handhold if you if you look it's really on there really good and the clay will surround all of this all the way up even around this so that doesn't matter um, but that is how I attached all nine eyes. Well, some of them I twirled around, but they were really messy looking. And this is so much cleaner and better. So I, I like this a lot better. So this is what I wanted to show you on how I attach those eyes. That's it for this video, guys. In the next video, I will be starting the clay on this. And it's going to be awesome. I really hope you guys can tune in on that one too. In the meantime... Like I mentioned before, please, please, please comment and let me know what you think about this video and like it. And until next time, I will see you here again soon. Thank you all so much for watching. You're really awesome.